Hello and welcome. In my third video devoted to the spindles, I was going to show you how to do uh, magical gestures while using a spindle. Uh, first of all, I must correct myself in my previous videos when I did call the thick part of the spindle the foot I made a mistake. Unfortunately, English is not my first language, so I sometimes make mistakes when I speak. And, of course, since this part, the pointy part, is the toe, this thick part is the heel, not the foot, as I said in my previous videos. So, I sincerely apologize. Uh, and uh, we'll try not to make too many mistakes when I'm naming things in my videos. So, uh, the gestures that I was gonna show you done with the spindle are probably rather simple, especially if you are doing it using any other instrument, such as, let's say, a wand. For example, in rituals for household protection, nope, that wasn't a wand, that was another spindle that I accidentally tried to take out instead of a wand. Got two of them wrapped in red cloth, which sometimes makes it confusing. So, but this is a wand made in Northern Russian tradition. And uh, uh, when they do house protection, they often make crosses. Uh, actually, crosses are not just used in uh, house protection, they are also used to open and close the water, to bless objects, and other things. But I want to show you how to make a cross first with a wand to make it easier to understand and then with a spindle. So two types of crossing are used in uh, Eastern Slavic tradition. One is a straight cross like this, up, I mean from uh, up and down and then from left to right, like this, down and left to right. Down and left to right. Uh, this is called a straight cross. The second type of cross they use is a diagonal cross. You go from your left side onto the right, then you go up, and then from the right side down to the left. Like this. So, both of these crosses are used in uh, rituals for protection of the house. Actually, they traditionally do that around January and water crossing. They uh, walk around the house, leaving crosses on the walls and the windows and the doors. And usually the windows are, and doors are crossed with a straight cross like this, while the walls are crossed with a cross diagonal. So, the diagonal cross is meant to keep the good thing in and not let it out, while the straight cross is meant to keep the bad things out, and that is why it was cast on the windows and the doors, the possible entrances into one's home. So, this is how to do these crosses with a wand. I have just shown you, again, straight cross is going from up and down, and then from left to right, and diagonal cross is done from up on the left and down to the right, and then from up on the right and down to the left. However, with a spindle, the trick is that you also have to rotate a spindle while you do this. So here's a straight cross, and here's a diagonal cross. Again, a straight cross 
and a diagonal cross. So the only difference with use of a spindle that you gotta spin it. Spin it, spin it, spin it. Mine is spinning clockwise. It is made out of birch wood, which makes it good for magic of attraction, in this case attracting the protection around the household. Uh, however, I have to mention that the best furrichos of protection are not uh, the spindles made of birch, but of trees that are known for their protective powers, such as uh, alder, rowan, and pine, and quake and aspen. So, again, as I already showed, the crosses go just like with a wand. The only difference is that the spindle is rotating. However, this is not everything you can do with a spindle. Spindles are also widely used in healing. And in healing, you could walk around a person while turning the spindle. Usually with healing, they use the spindles made out of uh, acceptor trees. So they hold it in the left hand with the heel down and they make this motion going from all the way down to up and up and up and down and up and up and up and up and up and they walk around the person like this while holding the spindle in the non-dominant hand trying to wind the uh, negativity around the spindle. I do not remember if I mentioned it in my previous videos or not, but it is important for a spindle to have a thread on it. They say otherwise the spindle would be hungry. There is another big difference between a wand that typically doesn't use a thread and a spindle is that spindle always has a thread wound around it. The color of the thread would depend on the nature of the spindle and the nature of the ritual that you are performing. Uh, so, returning to healing, I already showed you uh, the kind of motion that they do when they try to collect negativity onto the spindle. This is done not just when walking around people, this could be done when walking around the household. You can even spin with a spindle yourself, accumulating negativity like this. But again, when I put my hand down, when you're trying to accumulate negativity, I don't spin the spindle. I only spin it when it's going up. Since this is a healing ritual and we're working with the ascending current, we don't want to pour out all the dirt that we collected upon ourselves. So <clears throat> we do not spin the spindle when we return our hand in its basic position at the hip level. <clears throat> in healing rituals, aside from collecting negativity of a person, other uh, techniques are used and they use specifically spindles for this and particularly the spindles they have a rather pointy heel. It wouldn't work with a spindle that like this has a rounded heel. You need it to be relatively sharp. So uh, in healing, before they even start the healing ritual, what they do first is they tap the body of the ailing person, especially around the energy points, with this very pointy heel of a spindle, just gently, and look for the spots that are especially sensitive to it. Uh, so this is how they find where the illness is hiding. Uh, <clears throat> they knock with the spindle on the body of the person with its uh, pointy heel and uh, look for any places that are really sensitive. This is where they assume the illness is hiding and this is the places that they are gonna pay special attention to when they are doing the healing ritual. So after they collected the negativity on the spindle by working with the ascending current, 
going up and up they usually they work they walk around the person counterclockwise while holding the spindle with the heel down in the left hand and accumulate all the dirt in this motion from the downwards up from the downwards up and it is important not to spin the spindle once they put the hand back down because they're trying to collect the dirt and they don't want to pour it out back on the person that they're trying to heal or on themselves second step that they do when healing is using a spindle as a stake really like a stake to uh, <clears throat> kill a vampire they hold it like this with the heel up with the uh, toe down and they use the pointed toe to make openings but not really in the person's skin but more like in the energy cocoons in the person's aura they make these openings to allow the illness to escape usually it's accompanied by reciting incantations that are supposed to invite the illness to leave the body and come out so they leave these little punctures in the person's aura and the distance at which they're doing it, whether they're touching the human body or not, depends on the type of illness that they're trying to heal. To heal. If it's the illness of the body, uh, obviously they're touching the body. If it's the ailment of a soul, they keep the spindle a little bit farther away, around uh, uh, <clears throat> around. Uh, five to eight centimeters from the body if it's the uh, if it's an illness of the spirit spiritual illness they keep it even farther about eight to ten centimeters from the body and make these punctures and if it's the illness that is attributed to mind the whole basically human being is ill they may actually stand pretty far, about a meter and a half away from the person while doing these punctures and the aura. However, the healing process does not end here. Once they opened up the aura allowing the illness to escape, they need to mend the aura from the puncture marks. And for this again the spindle comes handy. They use a different spindle, not the same one that they used to remove the illness with. They use the, il the spindle made with a donor tree, with a typically wide, white thread wrapped around it. I, it's me, i just showing you on one spindle, but they typically use in healing rituals two spin spindles. One made traditionally of spruce, the acceptor tree, to pull the illness out and puncture the aura and the other one made out of birch or another donor tree to heal the aura and how they heal the aura is they take a spindle and they use it as a rolling pin they roll it on the puncture marks <clears throat> they roll it and roll it kind of in a form of a massage this is believed to heal the aura from the puncture marks. So this is how traditional Russian spindle is used in healing rituals, still practiced by the cunning women in some distant villages. Thank you for watching and bye.